Well, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton fine-tuning their debate strategy as they gear up around two, a little more than a week from now, along with lessons learned from their first one-on-one -on -one showdown, which the Wall Street Journal's Jerry Seib sums up writing this. In quote, in short, this debate was tough but also enlightening at times. Mr. Trump seemed a bit too eager to interrupt and play the part of the bully that Democrats charge he is. And in dismissing Mr. Trump's intense arguments with a chuckle and a nod of her head, she occasionally seemed on the verge of appearing smug, which Republicans charge she is. Jerry Sy, Washington Bureau Chief at the Wall Street Journal, joins us. This, this, your observation confirms what Pew Research found a few weeks ago, uh, Jerry, which proved that supporters of either candidate on the top of the list of the reason why they supported Mr. Trump or Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Clinton was because they weren't the, the other candidate. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the story of the year in a lot of ways, which is one of the reasons why, I, while I think that the you know, consensus is clearly that Mrs. Clinton won the debate, and I think in terms of making her points more effectively, she did, uh, there's an open question about how many uh, minds were changed and how much uh, uh, voter preferences in the polls might have moved as a result of that. You know, in a lot of cases, I think in these polls, people um, tend to see things that confirm what they already thought. The question is, how many genuinely undecided voters are really tuned in, and how much are they influenced by the same things the partisans are influenced by? It. You know, I think I think you have to let the dust settle a little bit on any poll, on, on any debate, uh, and let the polling tell you a little bit more a few days later, not instantly. What do you think will change any of this, Jerry? Well, look, I think one of the things that is key here is whether they reached key audiences. You know, I think uh, Donald uh, Trump probably wanted to pull back some of that suburban uh, women's vote from Hillary Clinton, you know, a vote that had been traditionally Republican over the years that tends to be leaning her way now. I'm not sure he did that, and I'm not sure that the conversation about how he treats women at the end of the debate did him any favors in that regard. At the same time, she also needed to start winning uh, over or at least uh, creating some enthusiasm among millennial voters, young voters, who while uh, they're, they're supporting her more than Donald Trump, don't seem terribly enthused and seem to be tempted to go away to a third party candidate, Gary Johnson or Jill Stein. I'm not sure, again, that the debate did anything to reach those millennial voters. So it's not just who won the debate, it's who reached voters that are persuadable and that will take a little time to determine. I thought this was interesting from uh, the Orange County Register uh, today. It's an editorial. I just wanted to read a little bit of this to you, Jerry. It says this, both Clinton and Trump are deeply flawed presidential candidates, and the debate stage put a magnifying glass on that fact. Neither candidate was aspirational, neither was particularly enlightening, and neither was remarkably inspiring. Most tragically, neither showed an aptitude or desire to be the much-needed uniting force our country needs today. And that kind of elevates the conversation a little bit past partisan politics. And that's why I wanted yeah. to ask you about it, because you, you talk about these issues so well. You know, do you, do you think neither candidate even wants to go there and really talk those big picture ideas for the country? Well, look, I, this is one of the problems in a debate, uh, when a debate becomes mostly about the two people and not about the people who are watching the debate. And I think there was a certain element of that throughout this campaign, even in the primary debates, and certainly, I think, on Monday night. You know, people actually want this to be about them, not about the candidates. And I think you uh, may see a little more of that next week when there's a town hall format uh, in St. Louis in the second presidential debate. And there you have voters who are going to ask questions. And voters tend not to ask about the things that uh, occupy so much of us in the political uh, uh, fishbowl of Washington, they tend to ask about real world issues and they force the agenda in that direction. And it'll be interesting to see if that's the case in St. Louis in the second debate. I suspect it probably will be. We'll be looking forward to your observations after that. Jerry, always great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna.